my great, 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 great grandfather was an African prince who is a child of 10, he was kidnapped, brought over on a slave ship that because it was carrying cargo as well as human beings, stopped at Montauk Point and dropped anchor as its first port of call. Now, whether it was because he was only 10 years old, so his wrists and things would be able to get out of chains, or whether his tribesmen, because of who he was, all colluded to, 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 to help him escape. He went over the side in the dead of night and swam to shore and hid out in the forest where he was found the following day by a woman who was a, a Shinnecock Indian called Libby. In some history books, she's called Libby Larkins. In other history books, she's called Sibby Larkin. And it is from that line, wait a minute, he was brought up as a chore boy initially, but he became so beloved of the family. Sibby had two children, two girls, Jerusha and Sylvia. They called him Solomon because he was a prince in the name, as named after King Solomon. And he married, he married Sylvia, her daughter Sylvia. The only record they have of that marriage, there's in the Queens County land records, and I still want to go there and find them one of these days, but what all, the only record of that marriage is uh, they, Queens County land records have the purchase of land on Hempstead Plain from those two, as they bought a land from, uh, uh, Cornelius Van Wyck, the same Wyck as uh, Van Wyck Expressway, Van Wyck Boulevard, etc., etc. That's the only thing that we have on record of that marriage. But once his daughter Charlotte gave birth to Sylvanus Smith, his grandson Sylvanus Smith, from Sylvanus Smith, uh, there is a uh, descent that I'll go into. Sylvanus Smith is, uh, was the beginning of, um, I should say, financial, and he was, he was wealthy. He was a free black, he was a pork merchant, and he also owned land. And uh, Sylvanus Smith was responsible for Weeksville. Are you aware of Weeksville? Weeksville, Weeksville is, um, uh, it's sort of like a museum. They, it's, they, people were uh, doing some digging in Brooklyn and they came across what was a 19th century black town called Weeksville. And he was a part of being responsible for building it. And it's now a museum. And they have two of the houses that are, are uh, were there. Anyway, so, uh, Sylvanus Smith was an abolitionist and uh, did recently in 2007, 2006, 2000, the, the Brooklyn Historical Society had a, uh, uh, a, a an exhibit that went into the beginning black revolutionaries and abolitionists and Sylvanus was there. He had, they had a whole thing on Sylvanus Smith. Sylvanus Smith had uh, a number of children. Two of them would become very, very Im important. Uh, he put my great grandmother, Susan Smith McKinney Stewart, I'm gonna start with her. That was my great grandmother. He sent her to medical school. She became the first black woman to graduate from medical school in New York, the third in the country. There were uh, two others that had preceded her. And she, this is 1870, she um, uh, graduated from the New York Medical School and Hospital for Women. They called her down to the office. They told her that because of her marks, 
she was the valedictorian of her otherwise white class. And in the next breath, almost as a matter of course, they explained it as it would be unseemly, that was the verb that they used, for her to address the audience, that uh, she, uh, uh, the, 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 the white uh, student who had come in second would be, the, sal the salutatorian would be giving the address. And then they started to go on to something else and she said, uh, oh, no, I'm the valedictorian. I'm going to be giving the valedictory. <laughs> well, they couldn't believe it. And they kept her down there like a common criminal uh, trying to make her change her mind. And she made it clear that she wasn't going to and that she was prepared to take it outside of the class or the, rather the room where she was and uh, um, make it an issue, a community issue. And so they deferred to the trouble they wanted to avoid and she gave the address. But just imagine, I mean, there are people whose hearts beat a little faster when they're getting up to talk to the PTA about something. Public speaking is not easy. Yeah. Uh, here she is in 1870, a black woman, and out front is a shocked white audience that can't believe what they're looking at, and behind you a, f a hostile faculty. Anyway, she was a, she became a very famous physician and uh, also very political, but political in terms of gender rather than race. She wrote a book called Women in Medicine and she, gave, she spoke at conferences here and abroad. She'd go abroad and speak about women in medicine. She founded the Equal Suffrage League of Brooklyn. She founded, uh, founded the Women's Local Union. And uh, as a result of all her, her, her political activity, there are a number of institutions in Brooklyn today that are named after her. Uh, junior High School, 265, is named after my great-grandmother. Um, uh, what is the other thing? That's, oh, the, the, uh, there's a gorgeous, uh, it's the Susan Smith McKinney uh, Nursing Home, a gorgeous building on Albany Avenue that is named after her. And one of her daughters was my grandmother, uh, my father's mother, Anna. Anna, she was she, well, her married name was Anna Cardi, and then Anna this and Anna that. But uh, that was my grandmother. And uh, another of his daughters, uh, Sylvania Smith, in addition to Susan being uh, one of his daughters, was um, Susan's sister, Mincera, who also is an educated woman persuaded the Board of Education to open the first black school for children, and she became the uh, principal of the school. She had to get a special uh, pass to be able to ride the horse car to her school. The horse car was a, a, a trolley that was pulled by horses. That's how far back it goes. And she married uh, both of them married clerics, and both of them they, both of them had second husbands too, because the, the first ones died. <laughs> anyway, um, she married Henry Highland Garnet, who is probably the most famous of all of these people. Henry Highland Garnet was uh, the way he came into the, the situation is interesting because he was the child of a family of slaves that managed to escape from a plantation by pretending that they were going to a funeral. And they were always being cha chased by s slave uh, uh, chasers who, uh, throughout their lives. Anyway, he went, he managed to get his son, Sylvanus, the, uh, his son, um, um, Henry Holland Garnet, a, an education. He went to the African Free School, he went to uh, an academy, and then he went to the seminary and became a public uh, person in, tr tr he had a uh, congregation in Troy, New York. And what he is famous for is a whole bunch of stuff. For one thing, at the 1843 Buffalo Colored Citizens Convention Against Slavery, which was the first black uh, abolitionist thing, he uh, was the orator who was remembered, even though that was also the first uh, time that Frederick Douglass 
went to a black thing. And it is my uncle's speech that is the one that goes down in history. Um, Henry Louis Gates Jr. will tell you that uh, he, he speaks of my uncle again and again, but as the Malcolm X to Frederick Douglass's Martin Luther King, because my uncle was the one who gave the call to rebellion. And what it says was, we are four million strong, better to, better to die free men than live to be slaves. Let your uh, motto be resistance, resistance, resistance. Anyway, he and Frederick Douglass and, and um, uh, Sojourner Truth often uh, well, talk to Abraham Lincoln. And uh, he knew Abraham Lincoln so well that when they had the memorial for Lincoln uh, on the, his birthday, many way back in that time, he was the first black to address Congress uh, at the uh, Lincoln Memorial because he had been so part of uh, speaking to him. And he became the American consul to Liberia. He was a whole bunch of stuff. My father's father, my grandmother, knew James Theodore Holly, that's where the Holly name comes, James Theodore Holly is where the Holly name comes from. James Theodore Holly was the first black bishop of the American succession of the Protestant Episcopal Church. He was ordained down here in Wall Street. Uh, and uh, as uh, uh, by virtue of his ordination, he was invited by the Archbishop of Canterbury to go to, uh, to speak, give the sermon uh, in Westminster Abbey on the Feast of St. James, after which by royal command he was introduced to Her Majesty Queen Victoria.